Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Kevin with Coyote 12. Today we are in the shop doing a quick repair on my 2006 Mazda 3. She is an oldie but a goodie. We're going to be replacing the water pump, the thermostat, and then upgrading the coolant to Evan's high performance waterless engine coolant. But before we start any of that, let's meet the patient. You are right, that was a little over the top for an 06 Mazda 3 with 156 horsepower and some wheels that I stole off of a Mazda Speed 3, but it's what I got. So first things first, we're gonna drain the coolant out of this thing. I gotta throw some gloves on and we'll get started. This is the radiator's drain plug. You can see that it can be cracked open with a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver. Once we get it all the way unscrewed, you'll see that it doesn't drain much. We have to actually pull it all the way out using a set of pliers or wedge a screwdriver in behind it and pry it out. Uh, but we'll demonstrate that so you can see just how it works. So it won't unscrew anymore, so I'm gonna see if I can get a skinny screwdriver in behind it. So you can see it's kind of pulsating a little bit. I'm gonna to have to get up top and take the cap off the reservoir to get that to come out more smoothly. We're flowing now. I already took the engine cover off to give a little bit better of a view, but on the passenger side is where we find the thermostat housing. These two lines here provide coolant to the thermostat housing and directly underneath sits the alternator. We need to protect the alternator from the coolant that is gonna come out of these lines when we remove them. In order to get a plastic bag over the alternator, we need to remove the belt. So the belt tensioner is here, and utilizing a 14 mil socket, we can take the belt off. The belt tensioner itself also needs to be removed so that we can gain access to the thermostat housing. That takes a 12 mil socket, removing these three bolts, one here, one here, and one here. So let's get that removed. Removing those three bolts allows us to remove the belt tensioner. That gives us access to the thermostat housing right there. Uh, we're gonna remove those two hoses, but of course, before we do that, we'll throw the bag over the alternator, and those will be our next steps. And just really quick, I just wanted to make mention, I put the drain pan and some absorbent pads underneath uh, to try to contain some of the mess that we're gonna make. So these are tough. I'm gonna have to take off the top one first. I have a little tool that I can use to kind of grip the backside of it and pull it and then it comes off. Same for this bottom one. Just gotta have two points of contact and then you can get it to come right off. And we have access now to the thermostat housing that we can remove. All right, with the hoses now taken off, we can remove the thermostat body. There are three bolts, one here, another one visible right here, and a third one that is directly underneath it. You kind of have to just feel around for it a little bit at the end of a ratchet extension, but you can get to it from up above. It is notable that where that gasket sits is aluminum, so we need to be careful not to scratch it or gouge it in any way. As such, I'll be using a plastic razor blade, a nylon brush, some engine cleaner and degreaser, and a rag. We don't need to make it so that we can eat off of it, 
but we'll get all the debris that's there out of the way so that our new gasket will seat properly. Because of the lack of space, it was hard to get a good view of this while I was cleaning it. My hands kept getting in the way. But that surface is now clean enough for the new gasket to get a good seal. We'll get the new thermostat body installed and we'll move on to the water pump. One quick tip is you're trying to get the bottom bolt in place, just hold it in place with the socket extension and you'll be able to line that up, hand thread it and torque it down. We're all hooked up and ready to move on to the water pump. The difficulty with the water pump is that there is no space, but we have a way to work around that. So we'll have to get just a little bit creative to be able to get that pulley off. I'm gonna use a ratcheting combo wrench uh, coupled with another one so it extends a little bit farther up and I can reach it. Uh, then we're also going to use a flat file. I'm gonna slide that flat file between two of these bolts. That will allow us to stop the spin of the pulley when we're torquing on it to try to get these bolts off. We'll loosen one at a time. We won't take any of them out so that we can continue to rotate this around and I can stop it using this flat file. Uh, but in this way, we kind of get past the fact that there's only about an inch of space here and we can get this pulley off and gain access to the water pump. All right, if I slide this flat file right down here and put the ratcheting combo wrench here, you'll see. That right there popped it loose. And now we can reach in here and by hand take these bolts off and I can remove the pulley. I had to turn off the camera to get both hands in there but with a little bit of wiggling and jostling you can get the pulley out. There's not a whole lot of room but eventually it will slide out and you can gain access to all the bolts on the water pump and that's what we'll remove next. Because we are gonna be replacing the coolant with waterless coolant, I wanna make sure that we have as much out of, the, out of the system as possible. Now that we've drained everything out that will come out with gravity, I'm gonna put a little bit of compressed air into the system and see if we can get the rest out. At the end of the day, we wanna have less than 3% water content in our coolant, otherwise we're still gonna get the corrosion or at least some of the corrosion that we would have gotten from regular coolant. Now that the pulley is out of the way, we do have access to the old water pump. It's held in place with three bolts. You can see two of them here, one and two. The third one is hidden underneath and will probably have to be accessed from down below. This is approximately the configuration that it sits in right now. So this bolt is the one that we're gonna have to access from underneath the car. Now that all three bolts are off, I'm gonna grab my big channel locks, put it around that water pump and see if I can dislodge it. So I struggle for just a moment here to try to get this water pump out. There are two versions of the Mazda 3, one that does not require the engine to be jacked up to get the water pump removed and one that does. And I happen to have the one that does. So we'll go over that process. It's fairly straightforward with just a couple of bolts that need to be removed. So let's get after it. First, barely support the weight of the engine with a jack. Then go up top and remove the two bolts from the passenger side motor mount. That will give you enough flex to the engine to be able to lift it up and give you the clearance that you need to remove the water pump. I have it jacked up just so slightly. Let's see if we have enough room to get this thing out. Just like that. She came right out, there's just enough flex. You only have to undo the one motor mount on the one side. You don't have to take any of the bolts out of the other motor mounts and it'll flex up just slightly enough to get out the water pump. And just like that, the new water pump is reinstalled. Uh, all three bolts went in just fine. I still have the engine jacked up just a little bit so that it's easier for me to get the pulley back in place. We're gonna uh, reinstall the pulley, then we'll reinstall the belt tensioner. We'll get the belt back in place and we'll go about putting the waterless coolant into the system. On a side note, and just as a point of reference, you can see the engine mount here that I unbolted. The amount of space that I had to jack the engine up 
wasn't a lot. I can barely fit my finger underneath that engine mount where it is normally attached. So if you're gonna have to jack the engine up in order to remove the water pump, it doesn't have to be moved very far. Uh, the water pump will then have enough clearance to be removed. And like I said, I'm gonna put the pulley back in with it still jacked up. It's gonna give me just that much more space. Okay, everything is back in place. Thermostat replaced, water pump replaced, pulley back in place, belt back in place, all of the hose lines are in place, and we're ready to put the Evans waterless engine coolant into the system. In order for it to work correctly, of course, it needs to be waterless, which means all of the other fluid that is in the system that kind of is hanging out needs to be flushed out. For that, we're gonna use the Evans prep fluid. We'll put it in the system, warm up the engine, make sure it circulates all the way through the block, and then we'll drain that out. That is basically a throwaway. We'll then take the Evans waterless engine coolant and do exactly the same thing, but that's gonna stay in place. Uh, we need the water content to be less than 3% in order to realize some of the benefits that come along with a waterless coolant. Those things include a longer lifespan. You'll never have to change the Evans waterless coolant. Number two is it has a better heat transfer rate. It will keep the engine components at their operating temperatures more efficiently than a normal uh, antifreeze would. Number three, it is environmentally friendly. Number four, it has a higher boiling point, which means you're not gonna get the boil over that you would get with a traditional antifreeze. You can actually warm up the engine, take the cap off, and you're not gonna end up with all the steam burns and all of the safety concerns that you get with regular coolant. Number five, and probably most important, and one of the biggest benefits to having a waterless coolant there is no water, which means there is no rust or corrosion within the engine itself. So we're gonna put that prep fluid in, then we'll get the Evans waterless coolant in place, and this job will be done. All right, we just finished warming up the car with all the prep fluid and bled all the air out of the system. You can see that what was once clear is now green as it's mixed with all of the remaining uh, coolant that was left in the system. So we're gonna drain this out and then we'll put the Evans waterless coolant in there and we'll test it to make sure that we're under 3% water content and that will finish up this particular job. And just like that, we will watch that drain away and get ready for the Evans waterless coolant. All right, we are ready to put in the new Evans waterless coolant. This little contraption that I'm using actually allows me to overfill this reservoir uh, so that when we're purging all the air out of the system and we're warming up the car, uh, there's more coolant in here, and as the bubbles come up, more coolant fills the system, and I don't have to sit here and babysit it per se, uh, because this is going to be filled up higher than, obviously, the level of this. It comes a little plunger that you can stick inside, and then remove this. You're not going to have all of this just spill right out the bottom, and then there's another syringe that you can put in and draw out the extra so that you're only up to the max height level on the coolant system. So we'll get the Evans waterless coolant in here, we'll get the engine warmed up, and then we will be done. This section is sped up just a little bit to show that as I warmed up the engine, all the air was purged out and the extra coolant went into the system. Once it was warm and full, all of the excess that was above the max line of that reservoir was removed. That finished up the repair. The replacement of the thermostat took care of our coolant leak and we replaced the water pump just because we didn't want to have to do it later and drain the system again. That Evans waterless coolant isn't exactly cheap, so we took care of it while we had the system empty. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.